Okay, so on page 626 is where we're going to be at for section 3. And this is the formula that we're going to deal with today. It's the circle. Okay? Now, the nice thing about what we're doing for you for this particular piece is that you are not having a center other than 0, 0 today. Much like yesterday, what was the vertex every time? That's an R, right? Okay, and the vertex was 0, 0 yesterday for the parabola, right? Today, the center of the circle is also going to be 0, 0. So what does the R stand for, do you think, in circles? Radius. Radius, good. Now, what most people do when we're doing with this particular part, you don't write the squared right. You know what happens to a lot of people is that when I tell them that the radius was 5, they tell me the answer then would have been 10. What did they do wrong? They times it by 2 instead of taking 5 times 5. Okay? Does that make sense? Now, what you're going to be doing is they're going to be asking you to graph a circle, which I'll show you. They're pretty, they're pretty easy to do. Okay, just like the parabolas were yesterday, didn't you find that those were a lot easier than the ones we've done in the past? Yeah. Okay? So I'll show you how to graph a circle. The second part is they're going to tell you, here's the radius, write the equation. Then the third part is going to be where you have to do the most work. What they're going to do is they're going to give you an ordered pair and say that between the origin and that ordered pair, that's the radius. So you're going to have to use the distance formula in order to figure out how far the radius is. Okay? So that one's going to be a little bit more work for you, but it's only a few of them. And then the last section is going to be graphing again, but it's going to throw parabolas at you and circles. So you have to decide which one it is. Is it a parabola or is it a circle? And then you graph it. The difference between the two graphs, circle as compared to a parabola, just so that you notice this, yesterday when I gave you those equations, I gave you just the x was squared or just the y was squared. On this particular thing, both of them are squared. If both your x and both your y are squared, then you are a circle. Okay? Now, when you get off to college next year, you're not going to have a whole lot of them that end up having the center being at the origin. Most of them have been shifted, which is then what we use our completing the square type situation, um, and we find the center that way. Okay? So just so that you know that that's what will be coming in your future. So the first thing that I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you graph one of these things. So if I say x squared plus y squared equals 36, first of all, the origin is going to be the center for every single one of them today. Okay? So 0, 0. How far is the radius? 36. No. 6. 6. Because remember, the initial formula was x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So what I would have to do is I would have to take this, have r squared equals 36, and then square root it. Now, keep this in mind because you guys have done this already this year. When I square root this part, you're not going to do plus or minus because we don't have a negative distance. And what happens if that number would have been a negative? Would you be able to do it? No. No. Because you don't have an imaginary circle. So, when you square root that number, you will get 6. A lot of times, they will be nice whole numbers for you. I would say probably 80 to 90% of the time, it will be whole numbers for you today. Okay? So, here's how you graph this. This is one of these things that you're not going to do so hot, I don't think, in the first time. Parabolas are pretty easy because it's just one little arc. But circles are a little bit harder. Your circles won't look circular. I guarantee that. Unless you actually were to use a compass, which none of you have. And that's okay. So how I do it is I make my lines like this, just like I always do. My center is at the origin, which means I'm going to put a dot there. And how do you think I'm going to graph with a radius of 6? What do you think I'm going to do? Go six in all directions. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, 
Of course, I'm using my finger as compared to my pen because it's a little bit easier for this part. But honestly, what I do at that point now is when I go my six in every direction, at the ends of each of those sixes, I will make that hash mark a little bit longer because a lot of times you guys can't just connect the dots the way you should. So I'll make that a little bit longer. Okay. It almost looks like, um, huh? Almost looks like a square, but not quite, because I'm going to round off everything here. All right. What that is is just kind of a baseline for me to actually just kind of go and make this curve in here like so, make that curve in here like so, make that curve in here like so, and like so. So it's kind of a squarish circle, but honestly, if I had you just draw the circle on your own you probably wouldn't hit it very well. You know what I've seen in the past? This is what I've mainly seen. If that was supposed to go six in every direction, and they go six, 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 and it's a lot of times it's like this, and they say that's a circle. Okay? So just so you know, that's why I made those hash marks there, and I rounded off a little bit more. So it is kind of a square circle, as you call it, but it helps make it more circular shaped. Circle. Some of you may be able to draw the circle perfectly. That's great. But I know some of, most of you won't be able to. What do you think for drawing them? Are you guys okay with that? Yeah. Again, they don't get much harder just because of the fact that we're never using anything else other than zero, 00 as the center. It's all zero, 00 today. Okay? Then, after that, the next part that they're going to have you doing is it's going to say, write the standard form of the equation of the circle with the given radius whose center is the origin. So, um, Markel, give me a number. Eight. So it's going to say R equals eight. And you are asked to write the equation. So here's what it is. The general form, remember, is x squared plus y squared equals R squared. But Markel just told me that his R he wanted to use was 8. What's 8 squared? So my final answer is x squared plus y squared equals 64. Done. Okay? Then, from here, here comes the harder part for you today. It's going to say... Write the standard form of the equation of the circle that passes through the given point whose center is the origin. So, McKenna, would you give me an order pair, please? And I know that it goes to here. Here's what I need to know from you guys. If I graph this, it never said to, but if I graph it, if I'm at 0, 0, and I'm at 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this is the radius. So my circle should flow in between there. should come out here like so. Okay? I need to know that length of the radius. What's the only option you have? Distance formula. And I say that, but I'm, that's not true. You have also the Pythagorean theorem if you wanted to graph these and make a triangle out of it. Right? But if you use the, the distance formula the way it was intended, what's, one, what's x1 and y1 every time? 0 and 0, right. So when I do that or set that up, I'm going to have 3 minus 0 squared plus 5 minus 0 squared. What's 3 minus 0? 3. What's 3 squared? 9. What's 5 minus 0? 5. What's 5 squared? Awesome. What's 9 plus 25? 34. 34. Now, here's something that I want to make sure that you are aware of. You are going to get a square root. Is that square root always going to work out nicely? No, as this one does not. However, don't break them down. Okay? There's a reason why. The square root of 34, for instance, does not break down anyway. It's 2 times 17. It doesn't come out perfectly anywhere, any shape, or form. However, you never have to break them down. 
because the general form for the equation says x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Right there, that square root of 34 that you told me is the r. So what happens when you square a square root? What do you get, Ty? You get the number underneath. So instead of breaking it down, so if it would have been like 2 to the square root of 10, then you'd have to square the 2 and square the 10, and most of you won't square the 2. You'll forget that part. So you'll never have to break these down, because when you square this thing right here, the square root of 34 squared is just 34. So what's my answer? x squared plus y squared equals 34. So no matter what you get underneath that square root, you do not need to break it down in order to write the ratio, or to write the equation. Does that make sense? X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. And the, the square root of 34 itself, Alyssa, that we had on there, that is the R. So therefore, when you square it, the square and the square root cancel each other out, so you just get the inside of the room. That makes sense? Okay. In the last section that they have you doing, it says, <coughs> equations of both circles and parabolas are given. Graph the equation. So it's going to give you a mixture of them. It's not that you have to graph them all at the same time. It's just whatever one they have. So if it has both squared, it's a circle. If one of them is squared, then it's a parabola, and we do what we did yesterday. Does that make sense? Do you guys want me to graph again? Yeah, one more. No. No? You want me to come up with another one like that? Okay, so on those problems, the answer is x squared plus y squared equals x squared plus y squared equals 34. That would be your answer. Do you want me to do another one like this? Now we do no, you don't. I'm just showing you that that's what it would have looked like. Okay? All right, then. So on page 629 to 630, 12 to 52, multiples of 4.